Hello everyone. Welcome to the second part of the video on creating our own unexploitable shoving tool. In the first video we already created a basic script, although it wasn't perfect. The algorithm that we used in that video was first we initialize variable 1, then we perform a set of instructions that makes BigBlind react perfectly. After that we store the data point and then we increase variable 1 by 5% and repeat the whole process. Finally, at the end of the script, we load the best tree that we've come across to the screen. Now, as it turned out in our last video, this algorithm results in a pretty decent unexploitable shoving tool. However, it's still slightly suboptimal. And the reason for this was that the hand ranking that we used to determine the top percentage for small blind was not ideal. In this video I'll show that we will get much better results if we use an EV based hand ranking. So first of all let me go back to the tree for a minute. I'll remove the approach where we make small blind raise the top variable 1% of hands. Instead we just make small blind raise with all hands and attach script location tree to the raise condition. And in the script We'll add a new section at the start of each loop. First, we always reset the race condition to all hands at location 3. Then we perform an EV run to measure the EV for each hand. And then we use this command, the one called top percent. This command will filter out the top X percent based on EV. Let me just drag the variable operator into the second field and it's variable 1. So we're always filtering out the top variable 1% and we'll filter at location 3. Now there's two modes here. Let me just turn on the hint system and now mouse over the top percent instruction. Ok, so the first mode determines what the hand ranking is based on. EV, equity or the standard preflop hand ranking. In our case we're looking for EV and the second mode determines if we are looking for the top or bottom percentage. Uh, we want the top percent and also what we want to filter from just the condition or the entire decision. Now in our case this doesn't matter since all hands will be treated by the condition. So the condition and the decision will have the exact same hands. So either mode will do. I'll just pick mode 0. So that's mode 0 and mode 0. So if we compare this to the previous makeup of the algorithm, let's just bring that up on the screen again. We have now inserted a new section where we determine small blind racing range based on the EV of the hands. Ok, let's see how that works out. And run. Ok, we get an error in line 7. Uh, that's the line where we delete the minus EV hands from big blinds range. The message says that this is not possible because there's no EV calc data present. The reason we get this error is because we've initialized the top percentage for small blind at 0 and we see here in the tree that therefore small blind never raises and faults everything. As a result, big blind call or fault decision is never reached. There's no EV data in that decision and therefore the delete minus EV hands operator doesn't know what to do. After all there's nothing to filter from. To solve this we should just initialize variable 1 at a non-zero value so that this part of the tree is always guaranteed to be reached. I'll just edit the script and I'll initialize variable 1 at 5 instead. Ok and let's try that again. And I'll just skip here. And there we are. Well, at the very least this new graph looks a lot more smooth than the one in the previous video. I've made a screenshot of it, let me just bring it up. So here's our previous graph. It had all sorts of weird effects due to the imperfect hand ranking. And this new graph is looking a lot better. Let me just remove the screenshot again. Now it's not just that, but the optimal result that is found is also much better. In fact, it's the exact same result that was found by the software's dedicated unexploitable shoving tool. So in summary, if we use a dynamic EV based hand ranking for small blinds, 
then our unexploitable shoving script will give results that are very close to optimal. Ok, that wraps it up for this video. In the next video I'll discuss the general approach that is needed to find an equilibrium. And in the video after that, I'll demonstrate that process by applying it to the tree that is on the screen right now. Where we have small blind raising or folding, big blind tree betting or folding, small blind pushing or folding, and finally big blind calling or folding. So in that video I'll show how to find the equilibrium for this tree. Anyhow, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.